Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation with complex numbers or should I say biquadratic. I'll be presenting three methods and we're going to be solving z to the fourth minus 3z squared equals 4. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to use what seems to be the obvious substitution, right? Since we have z to the fourth and z squared, that's what biquadratic means. We don't have z cubed, we don't have z, we only have the even powers. So we can go ahead and replace z squared with something. How about w? This implies w squared minus 3w equals 4. And yay, this is a quadratic equation, right? One thing that I want you to notice about this quadratic is if you put everything on the same side, then you hopefully realize that if you add the coefficients, it's not zero, but if you add the even coefficients and compare that to the odd coefficients, which I mean by powers of w, then you're going to get equal values, which means negative one is a solution. But let's go ahead and show that in a, in a different way. Normally you could use the quadratic formula or factor this, but I'm going to show you a method that I usually use for cubics and higher degrees because it also applies to quadratics. And that's also called the X method when it comes to quadratic because if the leading coefficient is not one, you can use this strategy, but it takes a little bit more effort. Anyway, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and make this divisible by w plus 1. Because if w equals negative 1 is a solution, then w plus 1 needs to be a factor. That's what the factor theorem says. So we, we're going to write it as w squared plus w because that is divisible by w plus 1. And then minus 4w to get negative 3w and then follow up with negative 4 and that's it. Easy. This is actually with quadratics, pretty easy method. And then you can kind of factor w out and then negative 4 out, and now you'll have a common factor. We already talked about it, w plus 1 is a factor, so we did it intentionally, and now the other factor is going to be w minus 4. So from here we get two solutions, right? w equals negative 1 and w equals 4. Let's go ahead and take a look at each case. Now remember, w is z squared, right? So we're going to go ahead and back substitute, replace w with z squared, if z squared is equal to negative 1, wait a minute, there are no real solutions. Well, isn't this channel all about complex numbers? Exactly. So, there are no real solutions from here. They are going to be, basically, think about a number whose square is negative 1. And did you immediately think of i? Right? I mean, i squared equals negative 1 should be a well-known fact if you're not very new to complex number. numbers. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. Uh, I made nine videos um, covering basics of complex numbers. Great. And the other solution is obviously or naturally the opposite of i because if you square two opposites, you get the same answer, even in the complex world. Great. So those are two solutions, but it's a quartic. Let's continue with the two other solutions. And this is kind of like an easy one because we get real solutions. Okay. So z equals 2 and z equals negative 2. So even in the real world, this equation has two solutions, but don't get me wrong, 4 has a single square root in the real world, but in the complex world, it has two square roots. So that's the main difference. But to distinguish between those roots, we call positive 2 as the principal square root of 4. Okay, so far so good. We got four solutions, and they are i, negative i, 2, and negative 2. Pretty easy, right? Well, with the first method, it kind of is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other method. And please let me know which method you like the best. And if you know of a fourth method, or even a fifth, let us know. Okay. Second method is going to use the name of this channel, which is A plus BI, right? Z equals A plus BI. By the way, I have another channel, which is called Cyber Math. Go ahead and also check it out if you're not familiar with my other channel. All right, great. So when you plug this in into z to the fourth minus 3z squared equals 4, you're going to get a lot of terms from the binomial theorem, right? So it's going to be expanding. And obviously, uh, let's put 4 on the left-hand side. So if you expand this, you're going to get a to the fourth 
b to the fourth because i to the fourth is one, so on and so forth, so many other terms. But we're gonna have to separate the real and imaginary parts and I did the work for you, so you don't have to worry about it. So this is what we get, a to the fourth plus b to the fourth minus six a squared b squared. And this should be familiar to you if you have done fourth power with binomial theorem before, these numbers should be familiar to you somehow. So this is the real part. And then the imaginary part of this number is gonna look like this. And we want this to equal what? Zero. Awesome. Now getting zero is really good. And obviously you could leave the four on the right hand side, then you would set equal to four, but I like to leave zero on one side. Now, this whole thing is the real part and this whole thing without the I, of course, is the imaginary part. When is a complex number zero? Both the real and imaginary parts are zero. It's supposed to be like this, zero plus zero I, that's equal to zero. Zero is such a special number because it only has one square root and one any type of root, basically, right? It doesn't have n nth roots. So, what do we do? We're gonna solve a system of equations, bad news, right? We're gonna have to kind of do this, but I'm gonna show you a way to do this and you're more than welcome to try it because it's going to take a while, by the way. Oh, before we get into that solution, let me tell you something. This is our system, right? Notice that the second equation is factored. And if you set 2ab equal to zero, you get a equals zero or b equals zero. And if you continue with a equals zero, you should get a solution from the top equation. If you continue with b equals zero, again, you should get a solution from the top equation. Let's go ahead and test it out real quick because that shouldn't be too hard. If a is equal to zero, then I end up with b to the fourth plus three b squared minus four equals zero. That's kind of funny because it's the same as the original equation, right? So if you try to solve it, again, negative one is a solution and so on and so forth, right? But here's one thing to keep in mind. In this case, A and B have to be real numbers. That's the definition of complex numbers. Again, look up the, the playlist lecture videos <laughs> so you can get a better idea. But yes, B, B, B cannot be complex or I say B cannot be not real, okay? B can't be not real. You get the idea? So if a is equal to zero from here, we get b equals plus minus one. And if b is equal to zero, then we should be getting a equals plus minus two. And again, you can test it out, it's not too hard. And guess what? This gives us the following solutions. If b is equal to plus minus one and a is zero, then you're gonna get plus minus i. And if a is plus minus two and b is zero, then you're gonna get plus minus two. And those are gonna be all the solutions as before. Okay, let's quickly look at the third method and then we'll finish up with that. So here's how the third method works. It's really cool. And by the way, I'd like to thank Nadia Fenn one more time for this beautiful method because that's how I learned about it. Uh, we're gonna be adding something to both sides. And I know this can be done slightly differently. I'm gonna be adding two kz squared plus k squared to both sides. So I'm gonna take the expression on both sides and add this to both sides. <laughs> kind of like both sides, both sides. Okay, so here's how it's gonna look. And I wanna kind of distinguish, uh, I kind of wanna show you what I am added to both sides so you can see, okay, make sense? So what I added to both sides, and now the left-hand side, and the purpose for that is to get a perfect square. Obviously, the left-hand side is a perfect square, but what about the right-hand side? Let's put these two together. So we're gonna write it as three plus two K Z squared. By the way, I could have put this on the left-hand side, but again, you know, this can be done differently. Now, in order for the right-hand side to be a perfect square, we can't have a z squared because then it's never gonna be a perfect square because that's not a full quadratic. You know what I'm talking about? If we had a z on the right-hand side, then you could set the discriminant equal to zero. But in this case, you have to set the coefficient of z squared equal to zero, so you end up with a constant number, which can be a perfect square, obviously, right? All the time, as long as it's greater than or equal to zero. So from here, we get k equals negative three halves. If you plug it in, we get z squared minus three over two squared equals four plus nine fourths, which is 25 fourths. And from here, we should be getting two solutions. z squared minus three over two is five over two, or z squared minus three over two is negative five over two. You could also write this with the plus minus sign. But after adding three halves to both sides, you're gonna get z squared equals eight over two, which is four. And of course, this is gonna give you two solutions. 
So basically you're going to be getting z equals 2 or z equals negative 2 from here. And in this case, you're going to have z squared equals negative 1. And that's going to give you z equals i and negative i as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.